Hello and welcome back to Legends of Wind Waker HD here on Hidden Triforce. I'm so sorry for the delay in videos. Um, I've had a lot of guests in town. My roommate had a bunch of her family and friends in from Dayton, Ohio. And uh, it's kind of hard to do narration when you have six people staying a night in your house. So I apologize for the delay. I actually have most of this game um, recorded uh, video wise. Just had to get the commentary added to it. Anyways, anyways, we got ourselves a little cutscene, so I'm going to be quiet for the duration of this. It's a pretty good one, so stay tuned, and I'll be back here momentarily. Anyways, I'm back now. Um, a little bit weird. Uh, I like that cutscene because you get to see Tetra, aka Zelda, become the princess. But what I find weird about it is that um, when she gets that um, Triforce of Wisdom piece connected, she turns into an actual princess where she has the standard Zelda dress and apparel, which is just kind of 
odd. Um, just because you have the bloodline in you doesn't mean that you should automatically uh, be a princess by any means. And all of a sudden, she just has the costume on. It's like all the Zeldas wear the same costume. What's the deal with that? Why couldn't it just be like, hey, BT Dubs, you're Zelda, and you have some royal blood in you, and you're destined to do things. But instead, it turns your fool out into princess instead of keeping her still like in a pirate form. So whatever. Um, just kind of an odd little caveat there. Uh, this is a fairly short video. All we're going to be doing here is uh, just finding out what we need to do to get into the next dungeon. Um, there's two stages we need to kind of uh, uh, rescue, bring to life, and go into their uh, respective temples to restore power to the Master Sword. And uh, the King of Red Lions here is going to talk to us about the Triforce quest. A long time ago, uh, Link, the hero, um, left the land of Hyrule and with it the Triforce of Cor Courage split into a bunch of pieces and just kind of got hidden around the Great Sea. Um, this is one of the most infamous quests within the Zelda series is collecting that. Thankfully, and as we will see here in probably about six or so videos, um, that entire quest process has been greatly streamlined and uh, it's not quite so bad anymore, which is always a great thing when Nintendo takes fan suggestions and makes things better. So anyways, what we're going to do now is uh, just kind of get ourselves a couple of vital quest related items and then we're going to work our way into the next and pretty much final two dungeons of the game if you don't count like the whole Ganon's Tower sort of thing which they always uh, have at the end of most modern Zelda games in some form be it a Hyrule Castle or just an outright tower. Anyways I got some great seas sailing one of my favorite things to do and what we're going to do is head over here we've seen this we've been blown by it but now let's actually uh, do something with it when this is something I could have done several videos ago but I kind of thought it made sense to put it here um, some reason the king just like stopped sailing so I'm just kind of sitting here um, come on blow come on there he goes um, this dude we we heard about earlier and we were told to give him a punishment if we ran into him so pretty much what we need to do is just shoot arrows at him. Now as a kid, I was bad at this. I could not do this and it would take me like 10 tries to be able to get three shots into him before I was sucked up and blown away. Most of those shots didn't didn't even really look like I hit him. But um, either way, I hit him. He's happy. Yeah, I got a great arm. Um, and we're going to learn ourselves a song which is very, very useful. I guess in a way... It's kind of been, um, its usefulness is not as recognized in the Wind Waker HD now that we have the fast sail. But before the addition of the fast or swift sail, as they call it in this game, um, this song, the uh, Ballad of Gales, was very important for allowing us to get across the Great Sea quickly, as obviously sailing wasn't the way to go if you wanted to get anywhere quickly in the Wind Waker. Um, so now we have the ability to uh, do this and also um, use the swift sail. So we're going at super speeds now and getting across the Great Sea is absolutely no burden at all anymore. Now the first thing we're going to do is go into uh, um, the mother and child island. I'm actually going to the wrong island here. I couldn't remember if it was the topmost or the second topmost one there in that, um, in that column. Um, and then I re remember it afterwards because one of the things that always made me remember where it's at is the fact that Ganon's or the Forsaken Fortress is in the top left um, of the map. And the closest one is just one coordinate away to the bottom right. But unfortunately, when we're warping, we can't do that because it takes you inside the island and you can't just sail out. You have to fly out. So I always found that to be very inconvenient that they put the closest... Um, warping location to the Forsaken Fortress um, and when you go there you can't even get out so it's just kind of a dumb little thing there I feel like they were trolling us a little bit when they did that um, but now that we have the Battle of the Gales we can enter into this island and talk to the Fairy Queen um, she's an interesting little character here and um, she's actually a lot of fun a lot she's a cutie actually um, and she's a little girl and I love this character design. Throughout this game, we've seen these uh, great fairies, and they look like the doll that she's holding in her hand there, uh, in her right hand. And 
in most of the games, the like queen fairy or great fairy is like this weird looking, creepy, um, giant, like humanoid fairy. In this case, it looks like a ghost child, and she's got this puppet of a regular great fairy, and I just find that to be a little bit creepy, a little bit uh, cool. Either way, I like the design of it a lot. Um, but she's going to grant us a really cool ability, which will allow us to uh, proceed into the next two uh, dungeons in the game, and that is the uh, fire and ice arrows. Really easy to get those. You need them both all at once. Um, Trojan, fire, and ice. <laughs> and uh, hopefully none of you kids recognize what I'm talking about there. And we get these two arrows, which is essentially, yeah, that's obvious. Ice freezes, fire melts. Good story, great fairy. Um, so after this, we're going to just exit out. Come on. Ew, now this little girl is flirting with Link. And the king's like, yeah, boy, you'll get some of that great fairy, mom. And we're not going to have any of that because that's creepy. And she's a little girl. Um... So anyways, now that she's like put herself back into a sleep coma, we can go ahead and exit. Um, and this next video that I'm going to have is going to kind of be, it's the video where I will go into um, the fire and the ice mountain. I'll go into both of them at once. Um, you only need to go into one of them to get into the next dungeon. And then you can go complete that dungeon, then go back into the other one and do it in that way and kind of go in order. I sort of condensed things and did them all kind of at once um, so I'm going to just go ahead go here windfall and uh, this is pretty much going to be the end of this video I'm just gonna bounce around a little bit so stay tuned for more of the Legends of Wind Waker HD this next episode will be a pivotal one and we'll collect a lot of stuff and get ready for the next couple of dungeons so stay tuned for that leave some feedback comments and likes and thanks everybody I appreciate your time Bye.